Eric in Near Pelt, Belgium. He writes to me, he says, Paul, I wonder why do most amplifiers sound different as you go above half of the volume level? Is there a relationship with the more power needed, the less DC power is delivered into the amplifier part? Um, well, sort of. Most amps, and we've, we've certainly talked about headroom. This, this is an issue of headroom. And, and <laughs> I love this room. This, this is where uh, we do octave records and we deliver. Isn't that pretty? Audio thing, nice vinyl thing, and all the stuff over here. Poor Michael. Michael Wooten, who is a great drummer, comes and works for us part time, and he does all of the octave records for us, and it's it's kind of fun. Anyway, we are talking about amplifiers, headroom, and linearity. So one of the reasons that amplifiers tend to sound different as they get louder is because of the a, as you get closer to the edges of an amplifier's power, it starts to change its characteristic sound. And that's because we're getting out of its main linear region. And it's because, what's a simple way to put this? Uh, well, I mean, I, I think an analogy, because I, I, I can't get into the weeds about electronics, though I would like to. And uh, he, here he goes again. <laughs> I am going to try and start a, a, a new series. It's like I don't have enough to do already with, with my new book coming out and all this stuff. But uh, I would love to, to figure out an easy way to sit down and start talking about basic circuit topology and do some projects and show you how transistors work and put it on a scope and really keep it simple. I'd love to do that before they haul me off in a pine box. Eh, actually, I just want to be burned up, but one of these days I'm going to do that. But in any case, if we were to look at the simplest amplifier possible, just, just take a single transistor, a single transistor amplifier, okay? And this isn't going to drive a speaker or anything. It's just voltage in equals voltage out, and we have a range for which that works. And if we were to put a distortion analyzer on the output of that transistor and we were to start cranking the level that it's outputting, what you'd notice is there is a major sweet spot. Uh, it's a fairly small range where we've got low distortion and we're not, we don't, not wrapping feedback or any of this other fix-it stuff around there. But we've got low distortion and life's good. As we start getting over halfway and start approaching the second half of the little amplifier's range, you'll see the distortion is starting to rise up. And all kinds of things are happening. If you do step responses, you'll see the same thing. Just take my word for it. As we get closer to the top, the characteristics of the amplifier change and not for the better. And this is one of the reasons, and we can correct for it with feedback, and we can do all this kind of stuff. But at the end of the day, no matter how many Band-Aids you put on it, it's still doing that same thing. We just don't notice it as much. So I am a big advocate of having way more amplifying power than you need, which is why we make the PS Audio M1200 amplifier. 1200 watt amp? Nobody needs that. <laughs> you just don't need it unless you don't want that to happen. Or the M700. There's a 700 watt amp. Let's just take that because we'll take it out of the, the crazy stage. 700 watts, still way more than anybody needs on an average pair of speakers. The reason we do that is so that you stay within that linear region. So that you'll notice as you are playing uh, you know, up near as loud as you're going to want to go, with that system, you won't hear this effect. Why? Because you're not getting, because it has so many watts, so much voltage potential at the output, that as you reach the limit of your speakers, you're not even close to the limit of the amplifier. And that's part of the key. That's called headroom. 
So if, uh, if, if we can keep the range, the usable range from the softest to the very loudest we're going to want to play it in our homes, if we can keep that within a small range of the amplifier that's maybe this big, then we're not going to have this effect and you won't hear that, which at the end of the day is what we want. We don't want to notice that it got louder. We just want to have it get louder and go, yeah, that sounds exactly correct. So hope that helps. All right. Thanks for the question. I'll talk to you later. Bye.